Highways to Fairways is brought to you by AllSportsMarket.com. Stop betting. Start investing. Wade and Charlie are a pair of ordinary golfer dudes just like you. Each episode, these two adventurers take to the road, searching for the most unique golf adventures on the planet. They're seeing the sights, drinking the beer, chatting up the hotties, and playing a local legend in the epic three-hole mystery challenge. No private courses, no elitist attitude, just two guys with a lot of balls. Finally, a golf show for the rest of us. The working man, the drinking man, the golfing man. This is Highways to Fairways. So in this episode, we're headed to Brevard, North Carolina, which is in the northwest part of the state, and it's nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains. We gotta figure out what this whole white squirrel thing is. Because there's white squirrels. You see on the sign of the top of those the traffic lights? Yeah. That sign back there was, what did you say it was? White Squirrel Realty. And White Squirrel Realty, I'm wondering, that is that either the name of the company or is that the clientele they deal with? You might ask yourself, what gets you to Brevard, North Carolina? It's llamas as caddies. When we first contacted Mark about doing this whole thing, he was in the middle of getting his llamas ready for a wedding. What else can you hear them for? Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, so I'm wondering what else to say, what other things are on the resume, so. The llamas aren't just caddies. First impressions when we arrive at Sherwood Forest Golf Course is, it's right up my alley. It's a whole bunch of par threes. Tell me a little bit about Sherwood Forest and the mentality. Well, we've got uh, 18 holes, all short course uh, holes from 85 yards up to 250 yards. Uh, everything's right in front of you. It's old school layout, nice mountain trek around the back nine, a little bit more open front nine, a little bit bigger greens, bigger targets. Great for kids, great for just sharpening up your game, regardless of, you know, what your abilities are, it's a fun little place to get out. So one of the main reasons we're here are the llamas. So if you if you wouldn't mind explaining how how much of a phenomenon has this been for you? Oh it's it's been crazy. We get calls on a weekly basis. Uh, you know we get groups you know come it's on their bucket list. I, I've had a lady come out she had a bout with cancer and this and that and one of the things on her list was to play golf with the llamas. So really? We, we made it happen, you yeah. know what I mean? And every week I get a call or two or three uh, trying to get something set up with the llamas. And, and their schedule is busier than, than most. Mark came to me and said, you know, I got this strange idea. I'd like to walk these animals, my pets, around the golf course. And, See if we can get a little attention from it, and you know, maybe you you'll get a little attention. I'll get a little attention, and it'll all work out. And boy, it's uh, it's been a it's been a great. So that's literally how your friendship started. Oh yeah, that's that's awesome. A guy comes to the course here. There's there's no you don't book tee times. You no tee times required. It's first come first serve. Yeah. Uh, I try to have it the most laid back golf course around, uh, we don't have a strict dress code policy. I know there's a box outside. It's kind of like an honor system. Oh yeah. Yeah, we Who have the that? four and after hours, uh, we allow people to sign in and play. Uh, I think it's the last of maybe the honor systems <laughs> yeah. that, that are set up. Yeah. Uh, but basically it's a drop box, you pay your twilight fee, sign in, drop your money in the box, go out and have your evening. Nothing punctuates a day, any day really, better than a beer at the end of the day. And we headed back into Brevard and we saw this new craft brewery that was just opening up that day called Acousta Brewery. This is the first time that I've really seen Charlie turn around on beer. This guy's usually a wine guy and he found a citrusy, granted a bit feminine, type beer. And, and, and I really think that's changed his perspective on beer. So this is a very scientific process, it sounds like. Or, or, do brewmasters make it sound more scientific so that people can justify them drinking beer for a living? You know, I'm, I'm still young in this career, and the way I look at it is you do have the scientific brewers, and then you just have the guys that throw stuff together. <laughs> and you are? I'm right in the middle. 
Everywhere I go, I seek out the breweries, you know, research and development. And, uh, research and development. Re <laughs> research and rip off, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, so it goes to and you, you come across something, it's just like, wow. Yeah. That's different, refreshing, that's enjoyable. Yeah. And so from there, I'll remember it yeah. and try to figure out how I can interpret that. Like everybody that makes beer, we made one batch and we're just like, oh, we're taking over the world with this thing. <laughs> you know? But no, I mean, that's what happened was we made one batch and I was like, man, this is really good. And then from there, we kept getting just fans of it. And so it went from one small pot to two bigger pots to half my garage to all of my garage. And then it was like, I need to move into something legit. We wish you best of luck and you know, we- Thank you. Cheers. Amazing beer. Cheers. Appreciate that a bunch. So after Acousta, we head back in the search for our accommodations within the Sherwood Forest. It's a beautiful place in the middle of the woods. If you want to get away from everything, this is the place you want to be. Look at this now. It's open. Oh, it's a Oh. Oh. I got the best room there. The squirrel from the sword. From the Pumpernickel Kid, Bernie Nichols, and that Toronto bully turned action hero, Zach Ward, comes the most interactive way to enjoy sports. Stop betting, start investing on the world's first sports stock market. Learn finance by investing in professional teams. Buy, sell, trade, earn. Trade for free from your computer or phone. Invest in any pro team in hockey, football, basketball, and baseball. Create your free account right now at www.allsportsmarket.com. Own the game. We're in Brevard, North Carolina, and Brevard is, you know, it's a rural area in the middle of the, the mountains of North Carolina, but it has a lot more to offer than you might think. So the first place we decide to go to is Rocky Soda Shop. And I wait to find you resting. Jalapeno white cheddar. Check that out. So what is that doing to the flavor? Kicking it up from a spicy perspective. So at Rocky Soda Shop, we meet up a guy named Brad who becomes our ad hoc tour guide. And he's telling us all about Brevard. Transylvania in Latin is uh, across the woods. Okay. And uh, Transylvania County in particular has a lot of woods. 45% of the land mass in Transylvania County is either national forest, uh, state forest, or um, state park. Okay. So it's a really significant part of the identity of the county. actually only a block away from the world's coolest toy store and I'm really hoping that John Taylor is in today because um, he is the really the person that you want to interview. OP Taylor is all about fun. It's hands-on fun. Uh, we play with toys while you're here. Uh, we sell toys that don't require batteries. None of our toys are battery operated. OP Taylor at first glance you think it's like a shtick but I don't, I don't think it's a shtick. I think Opie Taylor is just a crazy guy. So you must have a deeply rooted definition of what a toy is. Like, how would you define a toy? <laughs> so I mentioned that toys are more for just the kids though, right? You got a lot of adult toy? No, uh, sir, we don't sell anything that vibrates here. Good stuff here. It really shoots it. great, you know? It's a <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome toy. So weapon toys are cool with you? You're, no issues? I'm, I'm all about ma weapons of mass destruction. What's more fun than getting hit with a thousand bullets in a minute? Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> that scared you, didn't it? It did. So Opie Taylor takes us outside to the main intersection of Brevard, and it's like four lanes of traffic, you know, busy downtown district. And he starts getting ready to fire these bow and arrows and these little jet, you know, foot-propelled cannons. And at some point, I'm thinking he's going to say, hey, everybody, I just want to warn you, I'm going to be shooting some stuff off here. 
Doesn't say a word, just starts firing away. This isn't like really safe to do, so don't try this at home, but I am a trained professional. So what you do is you put the rocket down on the little stop rocket thing, and then you're gonna pounce on this pillow that's down here on the ground, like so. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, just missed the Kia. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> You know what, there were no accidents. I think people in Brevard are just used to Opie Taylor. They know you go to that intersection, you might get hit with a foam dart. You can just shoot it. <laughs> I'm getting the feeling Opie Taylor never sleeps. There's a moose over there, and it's not moose season, so this is a little illegal. Did you see the moose? But watch this. Oh yeah! Got the moose in the oh, butt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. So the next part of our adventure was supposed to be on this hike to see these beautiful falls. But Wade suddenly is not up for it. He doesn't want to, for some reason he doesn't want to go. He says he's not feeling well. I catch wind that we're going to be uh, going on a hike of many kilometers. Um, and the weather is slowly turning on us to rain. So <coughs> I'm not feeling very good. So the first thing we undertake is a, a mile long hike back into the Brevard bush, which it sounds as fun as it is. It was hot as hell, muggy, humid, and the payoff though of seeing these falls is amazing. And the free shower we got was even better. We're doing a little tour down towards the waterfall. I hope we don't fall, it's getting very muddy. To make matters better, uh, this place is everything and more it was expected to be. It was a beautiful falls, about 200 feet high, pristine, middle of nowhere. You know, it was worth the hike. So I actually got to see another of the 200 falls. It's a lot more accessible. It's right off the highway. Because it's been raining the entire day, this is covered in a big blanket of fog, which is, I felt like I was in some sort of horror movie. To end my day, I thought, I've got to finally get to the bottom of this mystery about the white squirrel. The motif is on signs, and yet we have never been able to see a white squirrel in the time that we were there. So I take it on myself to go out to Brevard College, which I hear is the, the white squirrel capital of the town, and I'm gonna find myself a white squirrel. But after it's all said and done, thinking in my head now is perhaps Brevard, you know, is advertising something that doesn't even exist anymore. My thinking is this is a, a myth perpetuated by the Brevard Tourism Bureau to, uh, to get people to come here and search for, it's, it's kind of like the Sasquatch of Brevard. I'm just ready to call off the dogs, to, to call it quits, and then as I'm just getting my vehicle, I look up in the tree as if it was just you know, planted there by God and there's this white squirrel halfway up the trunk. So I run as fast as I can, get out my cell phone and film him before he can disappear. There he is, there he is. White squirrel just jumped. The elusive white squirrel. We found it. So when it's all said and done, I get the solitary experience of seeing a white squirrel. I get the solitary experience of seeing the falls and having these hikes. But I can't give Wade too much grief because if he needs this rest for us tomorrow to beat the legend, that's fine. So I head back to the cottage. We're prepared to take on our legend tomorrow at Sherwood Forest. What are you thinking about <clears throat> with um, golfing with llamas? That's weird to have a golf cart now can spit at you. Spit and poop. So it's game day. We're headed to Sherwood Forest, and we're about to take on the legend in the epic three-hole challenge. I see the truck that I think has the llamas in it. I see llamas, yeah. I see llamas, yeah. yeah I do see llamas. We pull in, we see literally trailer full of llamas. They're literally all over the place. Welcome to Sherwood Forest, home of the llamas. Wade and I go off to a little quiet area and we are given a video from our legend who has hopefully accepted our challenge for the epic three-hole challenge. And 
lo and behold, the legend is actually Mark English, the guy who runs Lamb Academy. Um, now we just need to figure out whether he is willing to, to take us on. So. Yeah, it's one thing to guide llamas around, but it's another thing to have to play against us. So yeah. Different feature. Hi, my name is Mark English. I'm here in Brevard, North Carolina at Sherwood Forest Golf Course. With legend, the alpha male, the king of all the llamas. And we're here to accept our three hole challenge today with Wade and Charlie. <laughs> the question I have is, is if he starts to fall behind in the game, is there a code or something like he elbows a llama to get them spitting or kicking at us? I noticed he put some cologne on them too. Right. I smelled them earlier. Right. Do you so. smell it? So Thanks. we get to meet all of these llamas, and Mark's parading them around like a, you know, like a like a beauty pageant. Chatting today for Wade is you the man. Now I hear this guy's a little bit sassy. A little bit sassy, yeah. His dad's name was Piano Man, and his dad <laughs> had over 50 babies because of the big banana ears. I have no idea whether yeah. or not you're serious when you say that. <laughs> Come yeah, on, Next, we have Lightning, the world's nicest oh. llama. He's in charge of the cooler today and all of our accessory products. We have Vision. This is Legend's little brother. He's an awesome dude. He's very attentive. His name fits him perfect. He's always on the watch, so we always put him on front nice. while we're on our big trips. And he'll be your caddy for today. Awesome. OK, and last but least, we have Legend. He's the <laughs> alpha male, OK? His father's name is Epic, so he's introduced as Epic's legend. He is the grand champion of champion llamas. He's the alpha male. Now you're used to handling the llamas. Yes, sir. Has anyone ever challenged you to an epic duel like this with the llamas? Today's the day. So, the rules for the epic three-hole mystery challenge are, Wade and Charlie play together against the legend. Best ball, best two out of three, one mulligan per team, loser buys the beer. Note, golf rules subject to change because, well, it is their show. So the first hole, I really can't stress enough how cool it is to have a llama beside you teeing off. Oh, oh, he's casual. No, that's not good. Oh, that a boy. He's straight, but short. You can tell a lot by the attire someone has when, when they go to a golf game. And Mark is wearing Crocs golfing. So he's either one of two things. He's either he's an amazing golfer that doesn't care what he wears, or he's going to suck. <sighs> Hold on. You know Ooh. what, Mark? Tough bounce. Because we're Canadian. Mm-hmm. You haven't played in a while. We're gonna give you. The, you don't have to, have to use your mulligan. Sweet. You just. Yeah, uh, I need that. Hands across the border. I knew on Mark's first shot, right off the the hop, that we had an advantage, especially two on one. Cold, cold, cold. Oh. But he's in play. When did you uh, come up with this idea? When I was a little kid, I caddied on the golf course up in Delaware, and I dreamed about having llamas be caddies. I've been dreaming about it ever since. Got to where my older kids wouldn't even let me talk about it. Are they a lot like dogs and horses? But what I mean by that is that the dogs and horses sense when they're in any kind of trouble or they have a leadership around them. And, and these guys seem to be really calm when they're around you. Always on watch. So they're, they're uh, animals of prey. So they're always paying attention. They're always on watch. And they're great to have with you when you're in the woods because nobody's sneaking up on us. So do they actually give tips? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we've got all kinds of secrets. OK. But I'm saving that for my team. You're not sassy. Let's go. Let's go. You're not sassy, you're beautiful. Is mine a man or a woman? Let's go. Emma, he doesn't want to move. Here comes Mark's shot. Okay, there's Mark's. Get up. Nice. I'll take it, I'll beautiful. take it. Uh, not bad. That day Whoa. with some magic. Whoa. Oh, that's trouble. We're going to go to your friends. Come on, there you go. Take that bad boy out. <clears throat> Whoa, baby, hit a brick. Nice. Gonna go Wade. Wade taps it in. That's a gimme. After one hole, blazed by, we're up one nothing over Mark. When we go into each area, we look for a legend. Besides the llama, this just worked out well that there is a llama there. His name is Legend, yeah. Do you realize how much of a legend you've become? 
No, I try to keep it pretty llama humble. Yeah, because literally people from all over the world are coming to see you. You did this. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, we have a great time. <laughs> Tell us especially about the special needs things you do with kids, because when we first met you, you were doing the llama caddies. You had some the hiking tours and stuff like that, but you've now brought it to a different level. Tell what does a llama do for a special needs? Uh, I find that more rewarding than anything I do, even more than the golf. Um, we'll get eight special needs children, and we'll meet them on Wednesdays, and we hike every other week, all summer long, Wednesday through Sunday. And we carry about 600 pounds of gear, and uh, we just go off in the woods and have a good time, and you know, work with the kids, therapy work, and it's just amazing to see the kids they are like scared, won't even touch their llama at first, crying, and then by the time they leave on the last day, it's just, it's hugs and kisses, and just to see that evolution is, it's amazing. So you know what, you gave us the honors last time, we gotta give and you I'll the honors. I'll take it back, time. okay, right. 145 downhill. Right. 145 downhill, seven awesome. iron. What are you hitting? I hate to tell you, I'm going seven too. Highway boy. Woof. Woo. Easy, swing, batter, swing. Oh, too much. I'm both uh, marked. Highway boy. Well, what tends to happen when the llamas are out is what they call llama razzi. So you've got all these cars pulled over, taking pictures of these llamas as your caddy. So that was pretty slick. Llama razzi. Bump and Get run. Up. Get up. Uh oh, that's a good, oh. nice shot, Mark. Okay. Whoa, up. Whoa, Whoa baby. Nice putt. Second oh, hole, man. results. H2F wins again. Mark really at this point not putting up much of a fight. So here is these two dudes somehow up to nothing over the Lama Master. So here we are after two holes in very strange territory. We've actually won the, the challenge because we won two out of three. So we have to reinvent the wheel and uh, create a new set of rules whereby Winner takes all in the third hole. All or nothing, you get an extra mulligan. Nice. This is for all the yeah. brown nice. marbles. We all make a valiant attempt at the green. Mark uses his mulligan. It doesn't do any good. Short uh -oh. fat. Mark, unfortunately, wasn't able to take advantage of the mulligan we gave him or the extra ball placement we gave him, or the extra shots for the better movement. When it's all said and done, somehow we sweep 3-0, sweep the three-hole challenge. The fact that Mark English was our legend is actually perfect. You know, for, for not only this episode, but for highways to fairways in general, because you don't always have to be a celebrity or an athlete. That's not what this is about. It's about being just a, a, you know, a cool local character and having a story. And if Mark English, who created Lama Caddy, doesn't have a story, I don't know who does. Thank you very yes. much. Cheers. Thanks for hosting Cheers. us. If you ever have a chance to, to do this and come down to Brevard, North Carolina, I would highly recommend it. It's, it's well worth it, whether you're a, a, you know, a, a traditional golfer or you're looking for a new adventure, this is something you really have to try to experience. I also ask myself, is this the kind of place I could ever live? And, and I would honestly say Brevard is the type of place, if I ever get the chance, I could, I could easily live there. On the count of three, say Llama Squeeze. One, two, three, Llama, Llama Squeeze. squeeze. Llama Squeeze. <laughs> 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 Mama sneeze. <laughs> Got a couple of teeth here.